And now, an Action News special report. The subject, vampires. They have long been a staple of folk tales, horror stories, and Hollywood films, and they are seeing a new surge in popularity, to say the very least. But it may surprise you to learn that not everybody considers vampires pure fiction. Action News reporter Brian Taff has been looking into this and joins us with the details. The frightening details, Jim. Yeah. From Twilight to ABC's The Gates, vampires have become pop culture celebrities, long little known figures in the shadows, now stars in the spotlight. But as we found out, not all those who dress the part are acting the part. I've always felt it, but it wasn't something that I could really put a term to or that I could reconcile in a broader scope. As a child, Patrick Rogers knew he was different. As an adult, he freely admits it. His six foot four inch, 140 pound frame constantly covered in black, his mouth accented by surgically implanted fangs, Patrick's outer appearance is now a reflection of what's always been stirring within. I think a vampire by nature is a lone wolf, and uh, I've always been a lone wolf. Yes, Patrick is a vampire. He believes a living, breathing example of what most reserve for the realm of make-believe. For him, it's as real as it gets. Though Patrick may look the part, he says vampires don't fulfill most of society's stereotypes. For one, he doesn't mind garlic. And though he won't say his age, he knows he is aging. But sleep? Well, uh, as someone who's been struggling with insomnia for many years, I can relate to that aspect of, of, uh, of the vampire stories very, very well. Maybe most significant though, this vampire, despite his fangs, does not drink blood. Though there are some who do, called sanguinarian vampires, he considers himself of the pranic variety, one who feeds off human energy. Patrick craves the highs of others' excitement, part of why he promotes concerts for a living. But on the flip side, he also endures the lows of their depression. I can pass by a, a funeral of somebody that I don't even know and start uh, you know, breaking down and crying just because the, the enormity of the emotion there is, is just overwhelming to me. Vampire culture has found a home in Philadelphia. It's unique blend of architecture, history, and location, making the city a center of underground activity. I think there's a thriving subculture in Philadelphia because it's so well situated as a meeting point. The Volturi don't give second chances. Thanks to movies like Twilight and television shows featuring the lifestyle, Kutztown University professor Anne DeLong says we're witnessing a revival of interest unseen since 19th century England. The vampire works, I think, as a cultural metaphor that speaks to different cultural fears and anxieties. Anxieties like the emerging sexuality of teens, as seen in Twilight and HBO's True Blood. And for older generations, anxiety over wealth and class distinctions, as played out in Dracula. The vampire of today, less a monster, more a man. I personally prefer my vampires with more bite to them, but uh, it's, it's still an entertaining story. Pun intended. A few times a year, Patrick hosts the Dracula's Ball that attracts thousands of vampire enthusiasts in Philadelphia, several dozens of which believe, as Patrick does, that they are actual vampires needing to feed off blood or psychic energy. Now, he is mocked from time to time. He no. is stared at all the time, no. believe it or not. But Patrick insists he's not crazy. He's comfortable. And quite frankly, he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. Hey, live the fantasy, you know, why not? Live and let live. Thank you, Brian.